Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis where we apply fundamental analysis principles to establish directional bias and then look for technical analysis strategies like supply and demand to time trade entries, risk management and establish profit targets. And if this is your first time watching, a very warm welcome to you. And if you're returning again, an equally warm welcome back to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the content that I provide every week of use. So let's get into the fundamental analysis and um, the week ahead, uh, looking at the major events, I guess, and uh, zooming in on the trading economics uh, website, earning season, which is all right, but what we're focused on really is the Fed and monetary policy, right? So while the Fed will be deciding on monetary policy, um, on the economic data front, the US is releasing the first estimate of their second quarter GDP. And uh, I was saying in a, in a private video to the members of the Discord, or my Dis Discord members group, is that this is gonna be quite an important um, GDP uh, announcement as it is the first estimate of the second GDP uh, report. So um, definitely worth watching as well as Wednesday's uh, Fed uh, regarding the monetary policy because ultimately that is what will move uh, price in the medium to long term and sometimes even in the short term. Of course, prices move in the short term, but prices can be more random in the short term. But you'll see um, the, 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 I guess, the policy play out in medium to long term price and if you're a swing trader like myself that's what you're really looking towards is the medium to long term price not necessarily focusing on you know short term day to day price action as uh, that's more driven by uh, liquidity accumulation uh, avoidance of slippage and so on and so forth um, so we've got durable goods orders and personal outlays other GDP updates to follow include those from the eurozone so again that's going to be important and uh, we don't trade the rest as far as Sweden, Mexico or South Korea, Taiwan or the Hong Kong uh, currencies. Elsewhere, the Eurozone and Australia inflation data will be keenly watched as well as Japan retail sales and industrial output and China NSB PMI surveys. So again, inflation data is, is, is very important because it directly influences the central bank's monetary policy. So if you don't know um, really what's going on with monetary policy and why it's important, um, I advise you go over to my uh, YouTube channel, right? It's a free YouTube channel, right? Where, and let me just zoom out a little bit, where I, if you click on the communities tab, right? If you go to Trading 180 Home, you go to communities tab. I ask various questions and uh, uh, thank you to those who have been participating. You should be learning something from this as well. I will create um, videos on this as well, just um, on each one of these uh, uh, surveys that I put out asking, uh, and basically explaining, I should say, um, the, uh, 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 I guess the uh, the answers, right? Whether you know what the effect of reduction on bond purchases by central banks have on a central bank uh, or, or on a currency, and I will explain these um, and do some short videos for you. But please go through these fundamental, uh, some of these fundamental uh, analysis uh, polls because um, and the questions because if you do and you get them right, then you're really going to understand why inflation data is important, right? Why GDP is important to medium to long term currency direction. So um, it's well worth uh, taking part and, um, and, and also commenting as well. And I will create some content for you regarding the answers to those questions so you can start to learn really bite-size uh, fundamental analysis so keep an eye out on the uh, channel for some updates this week anyways moving on to uh, the technicals and some more in-depth fundamental analysis uh, let's start off on the dollar index dollar index uh, in fact, let me start from the NASIT dollar index. And um, so looking at last week's uh, price action, uh, we're really, again, grinding higher when it comes to uh, the dollar. This is, this is reason, the reason why is because um, 
If you're looking at dollar expectation, for example, of GDP, uh, which is a, which is a, one of the main measures of uh, economic strength and uh, dollar strength overall, um, you're seeing the expectation is for really dollar um, and US growth, right? So we're seeing higher highs um, and money kind of go into the dollar. And reason, again, another reason why is because the Fed are expected to look to hike rates within the next uh, year or two um, and hiking rates uh, basically uh, has the effect of appreciating a currency right so you're seeing the buy the rumor uh, take place and any pullbacks really should be buying opportunities until uh, unless the data doesn't support that narrative so um, what we have again this week is GDP data so we need to obviously keep an eye out uh, for GDP data as long as the GDP is, is also continuing to grow and it comes out as expected the figure comes out as as expected and the data does then you can expect the narrative to maintain and for probably a stronger dollar in the medium uh, in the medium term at least right so the data has to support the narrative it has to support the rumor um but this week we did have just going back and analyzing some of the market we did actually have some um uh, some risk off right <clears throat> some risk off sentiment risk off being fear uncertainty and doubt on the 19th of july with the monday we had the FTSE uh 100 tumble and stock markets around the world really uh um, in 44 billion tumble dows worst day since october as covid fears hit the market as it happened but then we had um pretty much for the rest of the week we kind of recovered pound hits five months low versus the dollar but markets recover amid covid19 worries um and then we pretty much had a bit more risk on sentiment so um, I always say that risk off can pull and can push prices to where we want to be buyers if you're brave enough right to buy in a risk on environment and continue and understand that some risk off sentiment can be short term some risk off can be uh, medium to long term right and it's something that I do um, uh, go over in my private mentoring uh, uh, groups with um, uh, with, the, with the groups with the group of traders that have signed up recently they're learning about that right now and benefiting from that and uh, um, a few traders um, actually benefited from uh, buying in fact um, you know dollar and uh, a lot of commodity currencies and uh, have made uh, some decent profit anyways um, yeah so we had a bit of a risk off and uh, one of the things again we have to uh, keep uh, keep an eye on obviously is the coronavirus uh, this article says the most important number of the week is 50,000 the number of new coronavirus cases may be on the rise but markets recognize that fiscal and policy support isn't going anywhere really interesting article from Bloomberg but one of the things that you have to again just understand is that the reopening of the economy is not an event but a process and the moves in the market can become easily understood when you can see Consider that the government and the Fed have made, and Fed, you know, you can substitute Fed with all central banks. Really, have made clear that their commitment to doing whatever it takes to ensure the process continues before stepping back. That is the fundamental driver of markets, meaning that we sometimes will have some risk off environments. Right, its risk off is going to come. The Delta variant does spread, but governments and central banks are going to do whatever they can to maintain growth so we might have periods of risk off but overall where is the path of least resistance hopefully in the medium to long term should be more upside of course we're going to get pullbacks of course we're going to get maybe days of massive pullbacks right but overall the government and the banks are still going to want to support the economy and by doing that um, it provides some buying opportunities so um, you know any pullbacks again within from a technical analysis perspective as long as the narrative uh, supports uh, or data supports the narrative really you're looking for pullbacks into any of these demand zones if uh, for example this week we've come out to a really nice area a nice supply zone area and if the um, if uh, the data doesn't support the narrative then I think the uh, the U the US dollar is going to sell off and uh, quite heavily matter of fact because of potential stagflation worries and not going to necessarily spell it out but stagflation um, 
and uh, that's a difficult situation for the Fed to be in um, and uh, I think that will have a negative impact if GDP does struggle with does miss uh, the mark and uh, come out lower than expected so uh, this week is uh, uh, a really nice technical level but also could be supported by fundamentally well fundamentally could be supported um, and, and uh, push prices uh, a bit lower so let's go on to uh, the dollar yen and we wouldn't necessarily trade the dollar index but from a dollar yen perspective you would definitely look for any kind of short trades in and around these areas if again GDP data comes out as um, as missing the mark if it comes out better than expected you can definitely expect a uh, uh, a move higher for the US dollar because again that would support the narrative of potential rate hikes if you're looking for any kind of pullbacks this week we do have and let me just I guess kind of clear this up this, we have got a bit of a wide zone to be fair um, when it comes to demand in that area but not to worry if you have if you find yourself in a wide zone of demand what you want to do is look for support and resistance areas within that wide zone and there's one probably just around here uh, which looks like a, a level right and then you've got looks like another one probably just around here so within this wide zone of demand these are the areas that you want to look for potential uh, buying opportunities right so it's supported by higher highs higher lows we know this is proof oh sorry proof of value all right this is definitely a, a bargain area if prices do come back anywhere down here or down here this is where we want to be potential buyers or up into this at one um, 111 uh, 50 area 111 66 area that's where you potentially want to be uh, a, a, a seller again um, understanding that potential uh, dollar sell-offs based off of uh, fundamental triggers um, and if we do come back into some risk off sentiment as well right then the yen does benefit from that so monday we could open up and then the market could start to uh, worry about global growth again and if it does if you start to see that then probably look to buy the japanese yen in the short term moving on to the dollar swiss and it's very similar with the dollar swiss hasn't really moved anywhere this week um, it's been in quite a tight range if you look at where the range has been um, we are in a summer month so not necessarily the best so we've only really moved 157 pips and that's been in the range since what's that june 18th so over a month we've only really moved 100 and uh, what's i said 100 and, and maybe uh, 67 or yes 160 pips probably something like that which hasn't been you know great if you're uh, swing trading but this is you know the markets what we do have those a bit more demand i would probably put demand probably around here so between this high and this low see what happens but again if you're looking at potential dollar strength any kind of pullbacks or buying opportunities again if you're looking for um uh, dollar sales based on gdp or disappointing uh, or or a dovish fed for example then uh, that area there is decent it's been touched several times so i'm not necessarily the the, the biggest fan of that supply zone i'll probably say this area here but again you need a catalyst i would say and and uh, a dovish fed or um, uh, GDP not coming out as expected um, and worse than expected will definitely be a decent um, uh, short term catalyst uh, moving on to the dollar CAD dollar CAD um, uh, we, again with the dollar the expectation of the dollar uh, you know uh, appreciating we literally pulled back up into this one to eight area and in fact there was couple of bank analysis uh, bank analysts um, uh, saying that the 128 area was a decent sell uh, nice pullback if you consider where we've literally you know been from the highs of 20 uh, 20 March to low right this is just a pretty much a um, a, a, a decent pullback due a pullback anyway um, and we could see potentially again depending on what happens with the dollar a bit more of a sell-off um, but if we do see prices pull back before the um, GDP and um, and uh, Fed announcement and monetary policy and we see 
again some good news you probably can expect prices to start to you know go higher from here from this demand zone it's one two five one five area down to this one two four area the canadian dollar is um, and the bank of canada are one of the first central banks to look towards hiking rates as well so um, for me not necessarily a great pair to trade as you've got two strong currencies or potentially strong currencies um, looking to do the, pretty much the same thing so you might see more of a ranging market state um, uh, in the near future but it depends on really what the dollar uh, comes out with this week new zealand dollar uh, again with the New Zealand dollar New Zealand the, uh, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand are um, looking to high rates at some point as long as the data supports that narrative then you should see um, probably more of a ranging market I'm a buyer with the New Zealand dollar but just not against really the, the actual US dollar um, we do have uh, pretty um, it's pretty kind of when it comes to supply and demand we are in this really kind of tight range and I'm going to move this up to probably around here i'll keep that there for now um and this goes yeah put it about here um so yeah we're into this really kind of tight range and again if you see a wide zone of supply or demand best thing to do is to really kind of break it down you can see that there was some support and resistance within that zone there where you've had support support resistance there a bit of support there wasn't much recently but it is there around that um, 70 round number so if you do want to look for any kind of short trades and buy the US dollar and some positive sentiment then there's your area to look for short trades if you're looking for long trades for me uh, I do like this area on a lower time frame that looks like a bit like a, a CPR zone for those of you who are in the room and that are watching this and the private discord members it looks like a bit of a CPR on this time frame well not on, actually even on this time frame but on a lower time frame it'll look a lot better and uh, I'll have to go back and see a bit of detail but that's beyond the scope of this one I'll talk to you guys about that in the private mentor room for a potential buy if you want to look to trade this currency pair me personally not really interested in it um, moving on to the pound dollar so pound dollar um, we have uh, prices did come down into this 136 area and let's uh, get rid of that so nice demand zone again we did have that extra level of support and resistance within that area of, of demand and access confluence one of the confluences we use prices actually went to the to the upside um, for me my bias has kind of changed on the uh, on the pound recently I think the pound may start to uh, be a bit more dovish when it comes to uh, central bank policy and broadbent says Bank of England may be right to do nothing on inflation so Bank of England deputy governor Ben Broadbent said policymakers may be right to overlook a surge in inflation now, arguing that many of the increases are likely to be temporary. And if that is the case, then that does sound a bit dovish, meaning that the um, they're probably more of a wait and see approach. And if they have a wait and see approach, whereas the Fed maybe might be a bit more hawkish, then you could see more downside, in fact, on the uh, pound dollar so uh, let's see what happens here so the path of these resistance at the moment is to the downside fundamentally um and also as well with the pound um there is um uh, some um uh, uh, uh covid uh, variant news let me just find the article so here it is and the uk economy faces 3.6 billion dollar hit from pandemic CEBR says and uh, the UK economy could face a loss of more than 4.6 billion pounds in just four weeks if rules on self-isolation following a ping from the NHS app aren't relaxed uh, according to data from Centre of Economics and Business Research so if you live in the UK you'll understand that we uh, have an NHS and National Health Service app uh, that pings us whenever uh, um, it thinks or um, uh, it shows that we may have been in uh, um, contact with someone who has had COVID so uh, there are problems with um, with uh, transport with um, 
with uh, food deliveries and other industries because workers are being pinged and having to self-isolate and then there's really uh, no one uh, around to or there's not enough staff around to really kind of serve customers or take customers to you know on, on transport networks as um, you know train lines are down etc so um, at the moment i think the pound is potentially looking to struggle in the in the short term at least if it does get out of hand so uh, that adds to the narrative of potential shorting of the british pound against the dollar but if you are looking to buy then there is a nice area here to look for the 13670 to 13560 uh, area for looking for buy trades uh, euro dollar so euro dollar prices have come down into a nice fresh demand zone yeah nice fresh demand zone um for me the path of least resistance is to the downside uh monetary policy wise you have the ecb who um let me have a quick look here we go ecb uh says gold must be at least 12 to 18 months 2% goal, sorry, must be 12 to 18 months away before hike, Villaroy says. So European Central Bank new guidance on interest rates means it won't consider increases unless projections show inflation at 2% target within 12 to 18 months. Frank, uh, Bank of France Governor Francis uh, Villaroy de Galao said on Friday. So, so Europe are actually behind when it comes to inflation um and uh if they're behind it means that they're looking to probably hike rates um on the back end or or after and lagging the you know the likes of the us and uh, the bank of canada and new zealand right so if they're going to be you know maybe the fifth sixth seventh bank potentially to start you know potentially looking to hike rates if at all then um that doesn't necessarily bear well for the uh, for buying euros in the uh, in the short term right so um if the, if the data doesn't support the narrative and you have you know maybe you're more of a hawkish fed who are looking to high crates then really and truly any kind of pullbacks to these zones are going to be really kind of sell opportunities because the dollar is probably going to appreciate right or say probably but should appreciate um with uh, hike expectations and the euro should continue to potentially sell off so even if we do get a pullback I personally on this pair would still see um you know moves to the downside provided that the data does support the narrative for the dollar right so the dollar as long as the dollar comes out this week and um you know gdp is 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 good then brilliant also we do have european gdp so that could also um you know kind of stem the move to the downside because if gdp for the eurozone is is really really good then you've got you know two potentially uh we've got two positive sentiment um uh, kind of clashing with each other and traders will generally then want to probably maybe limit the move to the downside because you two have you have again two uh, stronger currencies or potentially stronger currencies i do still think that the euro though is the weaker out of the two so for me uh, uh, probably dollar shorts and again this is not necessarily for this week because no one can no one can predict the future this is just understanding the path of least resistances to the downside by understanding the current data uh, moving on to the euro yen and euro yen did bounce off of this last zone so again with risk off sentiment we saw it this week we did get a bit of a sell-off and then um, on the Monday and then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, where we had a bit more risk on, you're seeing prices move to the upside. Um, again, any kind of pullbacks will be, I think, I think down to these, these, uh, this area here would be the best um, area to look for any kind of demand zones uh, and any buying opportunities from a sell trade opportunity. This actually is a supply zone right here where we're in. So if you do want to be a seller of the euro and buy the uh, Japanese yen, if there is risk off, then I think this is actually quite a nice area to look for short trades if the market sentiment on Monday opens up and we're in a bit of risk off. You really want to um, see, I guess, on the Sunday open, 
um, the, uh, the, 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 the Japanese markets sell off, right? If you start to see the Japanese markets, then is it the, the, the Nikkei 225? If that starts to sell off and there's some risk sentiment, um, then it probably might continue throughout the morning in the European session. And then that will be actually a decent trade to the downside. But let's see what happens with that. Um, moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar. Um, again, with the Australian dollar being a bit more dovish, uh, more ha having a wait and see approach and the Fed I think being um, uh, being a bit more hawkish but also as well the fact that in a risk off scenario the uh, the, the dollar is um, or can act as a risk off uh, currency where money will go into the US dollar and out of commodity currencies like the Australian dollar this is the reason why you saw this, uh, this sell off right but in a risk on environment yeah, the commodity currencies should do decent. So this was actually, again, a nice, decent buying opportunity if you thought that the Australian dollar risk was coming back on. Decent, um, a decent buy, even though the US dollar isn't necessarily the best currency to buy the uh, Australian dollar against. Um, for me, zooming in, probably decent short, I think, here. If you want to get short on the Australian dollar and buy the US dollar, um, any pullbacks into fresh areas of demand are decent uh, buying opportunities, but the pair itself I'm not really too fond of. Moving on to the Aussie yen. Aussie yen, again, one of my, uh, one of my pairs that I look to trade. And um, one sec, let me just uh, delete all that. So we've got a nice demand zone that broke through there, came down into this zone, higher highs, higher lows. As we know, so there, 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 right? So that's high, high, higher low. Um, again, from a risk off perspective on the Monday, we did get that sell off there, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, more risk on came in and we went to the upside, right? That's pretty much seeing the price action react to risk on and risk off. I think this is gonna be a really nice area to look for any kind of buying opportunities. If, 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 there is um, you know, some risk off sentiment, but we do come back onto a, a risk off, uh, sorry, a risk on, and this uh, again is around that 80 cent round number. Um, I do like this for a potential long trade if we can come back into that zone. Um, if you're looking for any kind of sell trades, you need prices to really kind of come back up to here to look for any um, selling opportunities, 82.50 area as that's where again lower highs and lower lows so low high low this has to be an absolute uh, bargain for the japanese yen why because it made lower low and then that would be the area where you're looking for sell trades between there and there right a low and a high is called fair value right fair value so this has to be a bargain for the for the yen but providing this is you know we're in a risk off environment um, but my my bias potentially is, is definitely to the long side. And finally, gold. And gold really didn't do too much uh, last week when you consider the risk off sentiment that came in on the Monday. Um, but again, I think that's probably due to potential dollar strength. So with the, with the US dollar uh, counteracting, I guess, gold and moving in the inverse directions, the dollar being quite uh, quite strong, um, and again the uh, the um, uh, the possibility of uh, content, uh, potential rate hikes uh, should probably put a cap on gold at the moment. But you could see again if the Fed uh, disappoint or dovish, and GDP is um, doesn't come out as expected um, as far as it's negative. Uh, GDP, then you could. This could be a really nice buying opportunity. So if you're betting against the dollar, then this is a really nice buying opportunity. If not, if the if the you know the Fed come out as uh, as a bit more hawkish and um, GDP is generally positive, you're going to see prices you know continue going to the downside after this you know bit of a pullback to that area, and you should see a continuation to the downside but let's see what happens uh this week probably a bit more volatility it is the summer months 
but um but there's some big news coming out anyways guys uh that's it for this week i hope you uh, enjoyed it if you have any questions just put them in the comment section below and i will answer the best ones um and um yeah take care have a great trading week and speak to you all soon